for such a long period of time be regarded as being best in class in that industrial space. Then Amazon comes out with an earnings report and says, oh yeah, we're not expanding capacity, we've got spare capacity, and Goodman gets hosed. Is that the right way to go and play this? Look, I think, you know, uh, it was a combination of factors and, and whether it's, you know, sort of the Amazon guidance, I agree, that was sort of the start of a negative catalyst and then just the changing rates and, and bond yield environment. I think all, all rates have been, you know, fa fairly hard hit, um, particularly, as you were saying earlier, you know, the, the growthier end of, of the REIT sector, the, the higher quality, higher valuation end of the REIT sector, which Goodman is, you know, pole position in. Um, but, you know, it probably is a long duration asset, so it's kind of expected to a certain degree. The thing with Goodman Group that you need to remember is you know they don't have stable rents they have growing rents um, over the last five years they've seen sort of 6.6 percent average per annum growth uh, in in their rental yield 6.2 percent uh, free cash flow yield and they've been able to grow their asset values by 10 percent per annum um, you know over that same five-year period on a compounding basis so you know goodman group isn't your average REIT, and i think you know this negative momentum you know may continue for a little bit longer um, and however, I think, you know, as those cap rates go from sort of 2.45, 2.5 and head towards sort of three, I think you're going to see some value emerge here. And, and certainly a stock I think needs to go on the watch list, pay close attention to and, and really read deeply into what management are saying, because I think, um, you know, you can't really tar uh, Goodman with the same brush uh, as every other shopping centre or office REIT on the ASX.